All right, so welcome back, chat. Last time, uh, we went, we did a few errands for Tarlac. Found out he had a secret. It's not really a secret admirer, a admirer. Succubus named Crystal, who became a human because the blessing from the gods. I don't know how. And we found a book written by Leslie, who describes what turn Nanog is. And. The meaning of um oh god what was the phrase the former phrase Dobron, Diram, Shannon, was what the former metal said. Was it the former metal? Man, my notes taking are terrible. Yeah, and it was mistranslated between Tarlac, Goblin Guy. So they were looking for the true meaning of it. And then Tarlac asked us to translate the book. Ask, well, asked us to tell, ask Crystal to translate the book. And she was really disappointed because they haven't seen each other for years. And all he asked of her was just to translate the book, not to ask how she was doing or what she's up to, how's life, etc, etc. But, but yeah, now we're back to Tarlac. Or Tarlac. Tarlac listens intently as you relay Crystal's message to him. Is that what she said? She doesn't know. I can't leave this place. I understand how she feels. I truly do. She gave up her life as a former for love. But I'm not a man who deserves that kind of love. It was too late when I realized it and I broke her heart. Aww. Can I ask you for a favor? I left something with Mevin of Turconel a long time ago. Would you please retrieve it for me? Just go and tell him what I told you. He will know. Is there anything else? Nope. So he couldn't love her because she was a former? Or because he was... It's a druid thing where you can't have a lover. Or maybe uh, both of those things are wrong. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, it's you, Ursula. Welcome. You tell Mevin and Tarlac's re request. Yes, I know exactly what he wants. However, even Druid magic can't preserve such a thing for so long. Fortunately, Lazar was able to help preserve it in a way. In a way, for Tarlac to finally ask for the item back. He must still carry that girl in his heart, eh? Well, it's really just so sad. Then, is there anything else you wish to talk about? Oh, does he like her back? Well, he just couldn't do it at the time because he, she was a former and he was a Druid. But then she sacrificed everything to become a human. But at that point, he was in too deep with rescuing Morrigan that it was too late for him because of the curse he got. How do you land, please? I'm trying to... Go to the mana tunnel or moon gate. God, this flying thing is so wonky sometimes. Have I met her before? I don't know. I'll just read it again. Waves of her red hair comes down to her shoulder. Judging by her somewhat small stature, well proportionate body, and a neat two-piece school uniform, it isn't hard to tell that she's a teacher. The intelligence look in her eye, the clear lips line, and eyebrows present her as a charming lady. Um, are you Ursula by any chance? Haha, <laughs> you look exactly like the way Bebben described. I'm sorry, I apologize for laughing. Nice to meet you. I am Lazar. Here, this is the item Mevin told me to keep safe. Isn't it beautiful? It's a black rose. The overwhelming hue of the flower itself turned it to pitch black. I learned to grow this one from the original Mevin showed me. So what do you need such a rare flower? Are you going to give it to your lover? Haha. <laughs> 
Is there anything else I can help you with? Ooh, is he gonna give it to Crystal? Talk to Tarlac. Before he transformed back to a bear. I got your rose. Yes, that's it. The black rose I have been looking for. No, it's different. This is a new flower. Still, thank you, Ursula. Please do me one more favor. Can you deliver this rose to Crystal of Dumbarton? That will be all. Thanks. Is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, another tragic love that couldn't be. I wonder if by the end of G1, will his curse of being a bear be over? Then could they be together? Or is that too much to hope for? This is, oh, Tarlac. Tears flow from Crystal's eyes. Tarlac, is still, he still remembers the song. The song of the Black Rose, the song I sang for him. Does this mean that all this time Tarlac has been struggling just like me? Thank you, Ursula, thank you. If it weren't for you, I'd still be wondering why Tarlac abandoned me. Here's the translated book. I apologize for my rudeness. There were some former texts written in the back of the book which seems to have no connection to the other contents. I translated them anyways, just in case. I hope this helped. Do you need anything else? Nope. Alright. Moors. Oh, read the translated book. The Book of Revenge, written by Moors. Who's Moors? No rules apply to them. They despise, torment, and ignore those that aren't like them. They will give up anything. If it leads to fulfilling their desire. Humans? The blessing from the gods they claim and are nothing more but self-serving act. Well, we despise the human for this very reason. Oh, so it is humans. So it's from a former point of view. Our despise towards them are such that we do not believe in it coexisting with them. May all humans be cursed for life. It's empty. Introductions. <sighs> to all formers and errands in Low Holland, I urge each and every one of you to pay attention to what I, Moors, have to say as a human being walking the path of former. So he's a human that's abandoning humans to walk the path of former, kind of like how. I wonder if he feels like how Keegan felt at the end of season one. Betrayed, abandoned, and all that regret. Yet, being unable to conquer the boundaries presented by the facts that I am a human being, the words I am about to say will have everything to do with revenge on the humans. Know that this is not just a wishful thinking from one individual, but a creed that all former should follow. Here are my three cries of revenge in hopes of restoring the order of the world. The first cry of revenge. Humans are the creation of chaos. They are only too happy to break rules and order in the name of growth and pract practicality, while devaluing everything that helped them to get where they were, sometimes even denouncing their existence. I mean, that is true. They strongly believe their desires supersede nature's beauty and harmony and even if there's a person among the crowd that practice patient and content that person would be classified as a failure their definition of wisdom isn't one that control their desire but rather the one that can maximize their greed they are fully devoted to the value to feeding their desire and the ones that are the most dedicated to this craft will be looked upon with envy that's just how the humans are it also screamed change and growth. The irony in all this is that humans themselves may have gone through generation and generation without actually changing one bit. They loathe to admit their sinister nature and instead blame it on the innocent bystanders. That way they'll forget about their own inner, inner sinister way in the end tricks themselves into believing that they are kind, gentle, being worthy of divine blessing. Humans are full of deceit, hatred, and betrayal and have the galls to bring harm to fellow creation of God that may stand in their path. That human, don't ever forget that. It's our duty, the servant of God, to forever hate and destroy the humans 
in order to restore order to this world. Formers, on the other hand, are the creation of order. Instead of changing the world to fit the need, the formers believe in harmony, balance, and order of the world. Formers, formers know the duty they have to perform as God's creation. Use their God-given ability wisely. Protect the weak and stand up to the strong. Uh, I don't know about that. Formers never hesitate to sacrifice for the good of the whole. Understand their personal desire are unimportant in the big picture. Firmers move in groups, showing compassion to those in need while understanding the difficulty the strong ones face, helping them out when in need. Firmers only have one thing in mind, to carry on God's desire of peace, unity, and harmony. Remember the true nature of formers, even if you may have forgotten it along the way. We are formers, the ones that never blame God for the society we are put in, even if God never seems to be siding with the humans. <sighs> Do you remember Turn on Nog? It's the holy pair that's created by the four gods, and its presence established order in Aaron, with the divine presence shining through each and every day. Alas, the never-ending desire of the humans have made them dissatisfied with the what the gods have given us. In fact, they proceed to destroy nature and stretch their infinite desire to the holy land of Turn on Nog. Do you simply dismiss human desires to live in the world of gods when they are in fact imperfect? Think about how big of a tra tragedy it'll be if that happens. Think about how devastating it'll be for the rules and order to be destroyed once and for all in the hands of humans. With all sins these humans commit, how can they even think of making their way to a land of eternity? How can we let them go like that? Turn and knock shall not be taken over in the hands of filthy human beings. Never. Turn and knock will shine the brightest. When the formers take over the land, and that what I wish as a human being who decides to fully embrace, fully embrace the life of formers, this is also what the gods ultimately wishes first. What we need to do is teach these foolish humans who lust over the holy land of Turnanog as a means to fulfill human desire. A huge lesson in the name of the creator, the gods of Ne. Never forget all that desp despicable act these humans did upon each and every one of us. To now return the favor to these humans and reestablish harmony and peace in the world. Always remember that turn on Nog's holy nature can only be kept intact by destroying the mankind. To those eager to spread the truth and the fellow creation of God, read my next cry of revenge. Every time I see signs from her, the only thing I can think of is this uncontrollable rage towards human. As time passes, however, rage is replaced by unbearable sadness in that I was never able to see my wife and kids. I just have to accept it. I didn't lose the sign. I may have wanted to just lose it. The only thing I can think of now is revenge. A, a revenge in the name of Goddess. I need to break out of the boundaries of human and think of about the brothers that really matter, the formers. So something bad happened to him and so he gave up on being a human being. Maybe he was betrayed by fellow human, hu betrayed by fellow human beings, and that caused him to lose his wife and kids. Kind of like Al Alhan was lost his wife and kids because of um, Inca wanted him to stay for the party, and, and he went he he went all mad, started killing the. Not hobgoblins, then I forgot what they're called. The monster beasties in the forest. But isn't it kind of arrogant to think what the god, assuming what the gods want you to do or what their idea is? But in the end, he's still human. Wouldn't he be judged for being human? But he is right. Humans are pretty greedy. But that that's, that's only like a few of the... Well, I mean, there are a few bad, she, uh, bad sheeps in them. Is it bad sheeps or black sheeps? But yeah, not all humans are terrible. There are some good ones. Just like how there are some good formers, like the goblin dude. I mean, you can't just... 
assume the, the entire race is terrible just because of the few bad ones. But I, I kind of get where he's coming from, though. What a disturbing book. And you say the Arthur is Morris? Hmm, you're right. It's not Morris Gwendian, the hero, is it? No, that can't be. They're, they probably just share a name. It probably is him. You know, I saw Morris Gwendian a couple of times when I was young. In the Second War at Mag Tur Red Plains, he snuck into former camp and ended the ritual, which will ravage Aaron. He sacrificed himself to stop the evil wizard Chabchio. Bro, I can't, I can't pronounce any of these names. Everyone was devastated when his friend returned with news of his death. His sacrifice is celebrated even to this day. And quite a few parents named their newborn child af after him. Come to think of it, it's probably been long enough for one of those children to mature and write such a thing. I don't know, if he's dead, did they bring a body? My rule of thumb is, no body, not dead. He could still be alive. That could be him. Morris Gwendion. Yes, he's the author of the book. He was my mentor, huh? And the wizard who saved the world. I had always assumed that he had passed away, but it seems he's alive and has sided with the formers. In any event, please hand me the translated book. I would like to look it over myself. Tarlac flips through the book. Just what I suspected. My master faked his own death. Probably so he could help the formers freely. This must be what Crystal was talking about. Okay, I admit it. Perhaps I didn't lose the token, but I wanted to throw it away. Hmm, I wonder what he was so concerned about losing. Wait, Dumbarton's town office collects lost items and returns them to their rightful owners. You might be able to find a clue if you can find what it is that Morris lost. Alright, to Town Hall. Welcome to Dumbarton. My name is Evan, the town office worker who takes care of all the business related to Adventurers Association. I'm afraid I gave that particular item to Crystal. I felt that as a priestess, she would know best what to do with it. You should speak to her at the church if you need it. Alright. <sighs> I knew you would be back. Here's the item you're looking for. Is there a piercing? I had forgotten about it until you left with the book. I was concerned that the person who lost them might find it at the town office. Broken Torg. It looks like a memorial item. Try using it in Math Dungeon. Here's the Red Wing of Glass too, just in case you need it. Need it. All right. To Math. What the? Are all these bots? Yeah, they are. They're bots for this rum, rum Pepsi guy. <laughs> Bothers. Oh. All right. Um, wait, is that on the ground? Yep. Let's see. This torque seems to have been bent often. It's been broken off in the middle. On the surface, there is writing that has been intricately engraved. It says, through any pain and suffering. This was kept at Dunbarton's town office. Experience the memory of the owner of this torque by placing it on the altar in Math Dungeon. Oh, I'm playing as Tarlex teacher or sensei. Morris, he has a nice mustache. I can't take the hood off. That's lame. Magic mastery, a bunch of pots. Well, I gotta set the skills now. Um, bro, no smash or anything? Oh, he has chain casting. I didn't know that was a skill. Enchant. 
why would I need that? Dealing lightning, some fire. Um, oh yeah, ice. Then I put some fireball. All right, let's go. Can he chain cast fireball? Yes, he can. That's great. All right, let's do this. I wish he had snap snap cast though. Or spell walk. This run doesn't have a lot of rooms. That would be really annoying. Just for you, buddy. Well, since it doesn't look like I can rank up any of the masteries. What's his stat? 36 years old. Level 72. Wow, high ass intelligence. Uh oh. Um, windmill. You failed me, windmill. Come on, come on, hurry up before they aggro me. Are, are you serious, three? irrelevant key because it's not even my character so I don't get the reward man these stutter We should be close to finishing, because it kind of does look like the boss room is somewhere over here. Damn, no spell walk. Really? An empty room? That's odd. Maybe I'm just blind and there was a chest there, I just didn't notice it. Cutscene. Is it the dog boss? The hellhounds? I need to rest. There's no end to this. I've been going in circles for ages. I'm so much, so much weaker after being unconscious for those two long months. I need to conserve my energy. Is the exit that way? See, exploring the dungeon or cavern or what Tarlock say? Catacombs that they're all connected. I forgot where he was trying to go. I can't stop now. I must return. I swore upon this torque to Sheila. I won't stop myself. I will make it back to Sheila and I will ask my friends. Oh no, he's trying to return. I will ask them why they betrayed me. 
So he was betrayed. Why were they compelled to stab me in the back? Yep. Same thing that happened to Keegan. I wonder if Morris Leslie, the person who wrote Turn on Knock Book, nice. Fence set? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, come on, guys. Let me win with you. Smash, windmill. Oh, this is counter. Alright, there we go. Still no boss key. There's, there better not be a second floor. Without any pets, this feels a lot longer. Damn, not even any mobs to fireball? Really, guys? Next on, why you do me like this? Be the boss room. Please don't be a second floor. <sighs> I wonder if there's a reforge for bigger splash range. That would be great. My bad, it was my alarm for my dogs. Although they're both napping right now, so gotta take them down soon. To the doggy room. Well, after I'm done cleaning their bed. Gotta clean it once a month. I do this one. Yep. Man, it's still not over. I'll just fireball. If it kills the chest, that will be great. If it doesn't, that's mean it's the right one. Mm. Okay, so it's either one of these two. It's this one. Yep. Alright, see a Mimic. No, 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 no. Oh, he stopped. Give me the boss room, please. Thank you. Ghost Armor 1. Morris, the Grand Wizard, we have finally found you. Please surrender and come with us. You may be alive, but it is on borrowed time. You are already considered deceased in your world. 
you may never return to the world of humans. Who are you to judge? You who are poor imitation of life, who dare stands in the way of a furious wizard. Morris, I apologize if my words have upset you, but they are the truth. Your life is no longer in your hands. You live only to the will of the goddess Morgan. Jab Chell sacrificed his own life to preserve yours. What? Why? Grand Wizard Morris, even if you... Is it Morris or Morris? Morris. Even if you return to a human realm, you could not sustain your life. Countless formers have sacrificed their lives for you. You must realize how valuable your life is. But he has free will. Can he do what, whatever he wants? I mean... I'm petty. If it was me, I would just say you and just do whatever I want if my life dies when I walk out that's fine because it'll be even more because they wasted all their lives for my life which I just spit in their face for so should have asked me first do not get in my way I am leaving this place I shall go back to the human world and I will forgive no one who gets in my way Fireball. You guys are no match from the power of my balls. Stop, Morse. That's enough. There's no reason to fight this meaningless battle. Ooh, this buff Chad Knight guy. Step aside and don't make me repeat myself. I will not forgive anyone who gets in my way, even the goddess herself. Oh, trouble wizard, I understand why you long to return. But if you do, you will surely die. Why do you not believe us? It's because he does not give a shit. If you don't trust us, it will only cause you more pain. Does he, is he, are they speaking metaphorically that he will die? Because he did say he will return to Sheila. And in the book, it did say Sheila and... Which I'm assuming is his wife. That his wife and kid die. So they're saying if he does return, he will die in the inside after finding out his kids and wife are dead. I mean, that could be mean. Grand Wizard Moors, would you like to see for yourself? Do you think you can handle the truth that I am about to show you? Lord of Darkness, do not underestimate me. Very well then, behold. This is... This is my house, but why? Why is it in flames? Tell me, what's the meaning of this? It's you, isn't it? Do you think you can threaten me by doing this? Control yourself, this is not our doing. Take a closer look. Um, I don't know whose sigil is that. Can't be. Why are humans soldier? Why are they destroying my house? What the hell? Ah, Sheila, my love. Sheila, no. My child, where is my child? No, no, stop. What the f Did they just kill his family? Damn. Why did they kill his family? If they already uh, betrayed him and faked his death. Well, I mean, they assumed they killed him. But they really didn't. The nobles heard of the tales of your so-called friends and sent their men out for revenge. Tales of your so-called friends. What did his friends do? We tried to stop it. I am sorry. Why did you guys try to stop it? I'm so confused. Because you learned of Jab Chaw ultimate spell, you and everyone related to you were murdered. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. You were fortunate enough to die as a hero, but your family was not so lucky. This all happened while you were unconscious for those two months. Uh, my Sheila, my love, my baby. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. All because of me. Morris, in the human world, you are considered a great hero. You sacrificed yourself to stop Jabchel's spell. 
Did you ever stop to think what would happen if you, the departed hero, were returned to your world alive? Did you think about what would happen? The humans would kill you again for their own selfish again. All of your friends have been have become heroes and they have the power to silence one old wizard. That's the reality. As you just witnessed, that's the ugly truth about human nature. Truth means nothing to them. Only their twisted sense of justice, which they acknowledge only amongst, amongst themselves. I myself have also turned my back on this sick race called humanity. So he's human too. If you seek revenge, submit yourself to Goddess Morgan's eternal will. I shall li lead you to the Goddess. Let's go. Take me. I'm done. F the f humans. Also, what's wrong with that guy? Wow. A goddess in the flesh. Morris, you poor soul. You must be in so much pain. Um, okay. You are. Yes, I am Morgan, protector of humans, guardian of warrior. I have been here since my fall at the first battle of Mag Terrell. So she was in the war too? What is Mag Terrell or whatever? Man, this guy is so tall. Then is this Turnanog? Where you are is not important. I mean, if you're saying it like that, I feel like it's very important for me not to know. That sounds really suspicious. What is important are your feelings towards human, your betrayal, your hatred, and your sadness. I see even you have given up on humans for their immoral nature. Do not forgive those who slaughter your family. If the opportunity of vengeance comes your way, will you not seize it? Damn well I will. No, I will have revenge no matter what. Those who have made me like this and those who have killed my family, I will follow them to the death of their hell. I will not let them escape. Though I am the guardian of warrior, I am also the force of war and vengeance. I have lost all hope in humanity. They slay their own brethren out of greed and selfishness. To achieve the order of Aton Simony, to bring true peace to the world, humanity must be destroyed. You understand my will, do you not? Oh, goddess. I, <laughs> I am yours to command. Tell me how I can have my revenge. I thought I said, oh, goodness. Well, I gotta rewatch that later because I'm pretty confused. So his friend betrayed them, betrayed him. For what reason though? To get the credit, the acknowledgement, to get higher power? Where am I going anyways? Oh man. Oh, okay, thank you. Talk to Crystal. Yeah, to get higher power, a higher precision in life and uh, society. So to erase everything, they killed his entire family. All because he learned the ultimate spell? What spell? What spell are they are, are, what spell are they talking about? And Did they kill him just for a petty reason of wanting to uh, be a noble, that's it. Oh, snap, I didn't read. What did she say? I gotta watch her back. I just have so many why, 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 why. This is why I usually talk during the cutscenes, because I forget easily. Oh, this dude is still here. This is, it's hard to believe that such a thing could have happened to Moors. Is he still alive? And is, this is the first time I heard of how much he hated humans. 
Please don't speak of this to anyone. It spares he be remembered as a hero. Besides, we only have limited information to go on so far. I like to look into this more on my own, and I have to read that book Morris wrote. Can you get it from Tarlac for me? If you have anything else, ask. Let me know. All right. All right. So, to get the book of revenge back from Tarlac, give to Duncan. That's quite a story. Thank you for sharing my mentor's fate with me, Ursula. Now then, Chief Duncan of Turkinel wants to borrow his book? I suppose that's all right. He is a wise man. He may catch something that we have missed. Yes, please give this copy of Chief to the Chief. Is there anything else? He has multiple copies. So this is the book of revenge that Morris wrote. Let me take a look. Duncan skims through the book. It's, it's only like nine pages. Hmm, interesting. Is this the end? That can't be, Ursula. I don't believe the book ends here. It reads like there should be more to it. Looking at the introduction, it seems like a three-part series. It's hard to really, really understand the goddess intention just from this one book. Could you find out if there's another? If we can get the other volumes, we can figure out how to best deal with Moors and the goddess and perhaps inform the king of Alec. We need to... We need concrete information to get to the king's ear. We have a king? It's the first time I ever heard of this. I don't know where you found the translation of this book, but please inquire theirs about the existence of the next volume. All right. I'm guessing back to Tarlac. Nope, it's Crystal. Another volume to this book. I'm not sure, but I was thinking the same thing. I know that these were popular with high-ranking formers. High-ranking formers? Like who? You might want to check with Era about this. When it comes to books, no one knows more knowledge than her. Alright. The book says you can craft... Okay, it's not. It's something else. The Book of Revenge? I'm certain we don't have a book by that title. I doubt I can order it either. Trust me, I know all the books we carry here. It's a three-volume set. If you already got in the first volume, then I can't sell it to you as a set either. I doubt they let me order each volume separately. Wait, it's for Morian? Why didn't you say so? I'm afraid you have to look elsewhere for that. I don't carry anything like that. Ursula, was it? You have quite a unique taste in book. I'll tell you what, you pique my interest and I know a number of explorers and scholars. I'll ask around if I hear anything, I'll get in touch with you. Thanks. <sighs> the book says you can... Oh wait, That's, that isn't it. I got something for you, Ursula. Do you remember that book I gave you before the land of eternity turned on Nog? The author of that book, Leslie, had some information you might be interested in. You see, Leslie is a famous historian and an avid explorer. She sent me this note. It says that she once saw the Book of Revenge inside Sierra Dungeon. She said, if you offer this note on the altar of Sierra Dungeon, you'll be transported to where you can find the book. Oh, these voice crack, man. Apparently, this note has some kind of magic in it or something. And here I have a red wing of goddess to help you along too. I wish you the best of luck. Is there anything else I can help you with? Nope. Oh wait, she gave me a red wing, right? Derp.
Please don't be R a RNG drop. Book of Revenge 2. Nice. Thank you. To Crystal, I'm assuming, to translate the book. You always gotta buy milk from the milkman. Oh, disgusting. Only chocolate milk? There's two strawberry left. I'll buy it. Or support your local milkman. I have a craving for a strawberry milk now. Might buy some later. I've been drinking a lot of cranberry juice. The priest is in. I regret that. So there really was another volume. I'm impressed. I didn't think you'd be able to find it. Yeah. It's crazy that he wrote three volume just for revenge when he could have just wrote a note says, I'm getting revenge. But hey, crazy people. I'll translate this book as promised. I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. All right, thanks, Crystal. Also, wonder what spirit weapon should I get next? I'll probably name it chat, just for you, chat. Uh, give me some stam. 10? Oh, 30. Oh, it's better than nothing. I'm desperate. Where's it going? Three should be enough, right? Also, I'm sure everyone's mad that I haven't used these rebirth pot. But I'm saving it for when I get trans so I can level up trans at the same time. Well, once I get rank one uh, transformation, then I'll start popping them. Uh, what's? Oh yeah, I was, gonna, I was going for crystal. Receive the translated copy. You must be here for the translation of the next volume. Here, I think you should read it yourself. It's better than having me summarize it for you. But I'm dumb. That's it. I can't believe what's written in there. All right. The first one was about how he was betrayed. Humans are terrible and forms is the righteous race, righteous superior race, and that we should abandon being humans and join the former side because humans are terrible. What does the second one say? No. There we go. Two. What? What's this book? I guess this answer my question, what is Mag Terrain? The goddess who turned into stone, written by Iman. Anyone who has ever entered a dungeon has seen the statue of the winged goddess carrying her sword. Though she looks at peace, there is a hint of sorrows in her eyes as she looks upon the adventurers. This statue has been made to comm commemorate the wonderful goddess Morgan, who sacrificed her life to save us humans during the war. Long ago, the evil former constantly invaded the human world, killing countless innocent lives. Many lived in fear of their invasion, lost their lives, and some were even taken into slavery. Those who could not take the abuse attempted to fight back, but the formers were too powerful and intelligent. Human were no match for them. Things turned around during the Second War at Mag Turil. The one... I don't think that's the one Moore's fought in, right? So when Morgan fought in uh, Magtarell's plane as humans defeat the formers and chase them out of the air Aaron. However, we must remember the sad tales of God's Morgan during the first of these two wars. Oh, okay. So this is the one Morris fought in. I'm guessing the first two war was the one Morgan was in. Goddess Morgan is one of the three gods of Aaron who represents war and revenge. However, despite the fact that she is the goddess of war and revenge, she is not a violent or vic vicious goddess. As a matter of fact, she blesses and encourages the warriors that go out to battle, and when soldiers are wounded and defeated, she helps them seek revenge. 
She has such deep compassion for humans in that every time we were threatened by the formers, she protected us from their evil grip. Hell. But it all happens during the first war of Mag Terrell. When the war was almost over, it was the first war that the humans represented by the Tooth, the Danon, Danon, I don't know, face the former see, cunning former used Turbog, another human clan, and put them on the forefront of the battle, making it difficult for to the Danon to fight. Oh man, that's a really twisted. Wait, did he trick them into fighting for them? They're basically being used as a shield. Oh. No problem, Milkman. Because Yotex. So he used them as a shield to deter Donon. Thankfully, Tooth the Danon, able to defeat the spellbound Turbulk under their mighty king, warrior Nahada. However, during the last battle with victory close at hand, Nahada was seriously wounded on the arms by a fur bulk. What is a fur bulk warrior named? Syringe. Nahada was immediately taken to Raf to hide out. Raf are fortresses that are made specifically for war against formers. It has been inactive for many years after the war and now they are known as dungeons. Oh, the dungeons used to be um, bunkers basically for war. Oh, that's cool. Although Victory was clearly leaning towards Telthi Danon. The refugees that were hiding out in the raft began to panic as they saw their great leader wounded. Oh, Nahada. This is when things got worse. The formers were waiting for the Dunnan leader to retreat to the raft. Through the secret passage of the former, they invaded the raft from the inside and began attacking. Damn, that's terrible. That's like... Wait, did they have guards? Did they know? If they didn't, it would be kind of like Game of Thrones Season 8 when they thought it was a great idea to hide in the the death pit, the graveyard pit, what, whatever graveyard down there against the Necromancer. And would you not believe it? The Necromancer used what ne Necromancer do, raise the dead. And then the, the dead was awakening where they were resting in the dead shelter, whatever. Must have been not a great idea. In the middle of the fortress where our soldiers and our leaders was resting unguarded. The formers appear without warning. A passageway open from the land of formers. Oh, that way. So it's like a portal, basically. That that popped up. And they continue pouring in, slaughtering all the people inside the raft. <sighs> One day, voice crack. One day, you'll be gone. The fortress of the human turned into a slaughterhouse as a... Tooth the Denim was on the brink of defeat. King Nahada tried to fight off the formers with his wounded body, but it was no use. Oh, and there's Morgan. Just then, the black winged goddess Morgan appeared. <sighs> My back. The goddess used her power to stop the formers from coming through to the raft. Many were able to escape while the goddess held off the formers. However, the formers did not back away, even for the goddess of war. It was too much to single-handedly take an entire army of formers. The goddess slowly began growing weaker. As the last resort, the goddess used her remaining strength to cast one last spell. She had to use her body as collateral to seal the passage of the formers. The formers were forever trapped inside the seals of the goddess, stuck inside forever. The few remaining ones in the raft were killed by the human warrior. However, what people didn't realize, the magic the goddess used required a tremendous sacrifice. The goddess herself had to turn to stone. That's how much she wanted to protect us. After the war, as a comm commemoration of the victory, humans set up stone statues of the goddess all throughout Erin to remember the honors to remember and honor her sacrifice. These are the statues you see inside the dungeons. The goddess who lost her physical body to Aaron ascended to the land of the gods, Tur Nanog. So is it paradise? It's in a land of the god? Is it a trap? Which is it? Everyone has different um, views of it. Is that the word? I don't know. 
Uh, she is there right now watching down on us from there. Conclusion. And like that, Goddess Morgan allowed the human race to flourish in Eren and disappear. Now she can only be seen as a statue in dungeons. But one strange occurrence has been reported. People said that if you place an item on the altar of the goddess, you are transported to another place. Although the goddess turned into stone, people started to believe once again that she was still watching over us, even in Turnanog. And that's why people call her the protector of humans. And warriors, warriors and people revere her. The goddess is watching over us forever. Well, it went through a lot. So whatever happened to Nahara? Did he die? Because it said he was gravely wounded, but it didn't say he died. Morgan, we can assume she's, no, yeah. Can assume she's dead and that she went to the, was she a god back then too? So how does, what happens when a god lose their life? Do they just get rebirth? Because it said that she used her life as collateral, which means she killed herself, right? So, I'm guessing when God died, they get rebirthed too. Because it said that she was up there in Turnanog watching us. Well, I mean, from this guy's um, point of view, he thinks that, well, mostly what he said is just his opinion on what happened. So, it's not really particularly real or what really happened. But, yeah. Oh, wait, it gave me two copies? How many pages is this? Or should I stop it here? Eight pages. Is it long? Oh, it's not that long. I'll just probably just read it. Book of Revenge 2. Written by Moors. Why can't this beautiful world be ours? Why do those wicked humans have to claim ownership? Why does the god ignore the treacherous act of these humans? I'd rather die in battle against humans than kneel down and ask for mercy from them. I'll be keeping my dignity intact as a proud creation of God. I wonder if he really feels that way. Or is it just of the moment after finding out his wife and daughter got killed? I mean, I could understand his frustration of wanting revenge for those that betrayed him and ruined him. But does he feel, really feel that way that formers are superior to humans? Or are they just using it against him to control him? Those that are reading the second cry of revenge shall always follow the goddess of war. The god hears our cries of revenge and sees our effort to bring order to this world and have bestowed the blessing of the goddess to war to protect us. The humans are now the only ones entitled to the blessing from the god. Do not pin my cry for revenge as a cry from a human being. The life of Moors as a human being has ceased long ago. The life of Moors these days is but a servant of the goddess and a brother of formers in hopes of them demolishing the humankind. Do not dismiss my cry of revenge as futile. Rather, hear out the one's brother who is willing to serve the goddess, crossing the boundaries of race. The second cry of, of revenge. Human em emerge victorious in the battle of Mor Tura. Man, I'm going to write down all these battles. There's like Battle of Toriel 1, 2, and 3. And then now there's a Battle of Mor Tura. Also, there's some guy named Nahada and Danin, Donon, uh, Chad, Black Knight guy, and Moors. Humans emerge victorious in the Battle of Mortara, but they are in fact ignoring the truth. The truth is that the victory was a glorified name for betrayal and contempt. Their complete ignorance towards others have reached to the point where they believe it was the truth that they are the true messenger of God. In human eyes, even God's greatest action, nature is beneath them. <sighs> Even so, nature always works as a supporting cast, always blending in harmony with the surrounding, much like us formers. Nature believes coexisting with humans even as are continuously destroyed in the hands of human and is a role bestowed upon them by the gods. <sighs> Need a drink of water. This, unfortunately, only serves to continue the rampage by these humans. 
we formers are here to bring the glory back to nature and our best way to do so is to open its eyes to the truth. The truth about sins the humans have committed against the nature with no remorse whatsoever. It is our job to awaken the nature and deliver it from the human abuse. We now know that with the eye-opening scroll, everything from deer to stand, strand of grass is starting to see the abuse they take in and are despising the humans as a result. Abuse the grass have taken. Don't you step over grass too? And ants, bugs, killing humans and animals. I mean, it goes both ways for both the humans and the formers. Uh, da, 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 da. We now that with, okay, grass, blah, blah, animals. Okay. I mean, do formers even eat? I know they definitely step on grass and flowers and plant life and all that shit. But do they not eat? Do they survive off of breathing in mana? Or do they eat mana? Or orcs or stones, trees or something? But even then, they're abusing the mana and the rocks or whatever they're doing. Uh, despising human as results, nature is now aware that since their plot of the humans and instead of being one of nature, the humans split from the nature and commit all the despicable act in the name of serving God. I mean, you're God that's there. Uh, flashback to Pontiff Lori and Psycho Nails related friend, church, pope, whatever. Even so, the humans are completely oblivious to this and continue to extract things from nature, foolishly believing in their intelligence. One day, nature will no longer be so tolerant and bring wrath to the humans. The day will come. Nature isn't the only one turning in its back on humans. Even the goddess that have provided the humans with divine protection have gradually turned their backs on them. Even Goddess Morgan, who responsible for lending her power to the na to humans and dust block invitation from us formers have started to understand our values and belief. And that has helped us in recent times. The goddess had turned herself into a statue to protect the path to, to the humans, but now she has broken the seal and has let us formers walk the path of the humans. Never forget the support of the goddess who has opened the doors for us to return to Eren. I mean, it could be Psycho. Because Keegan, or I mean Psycho now, did really hate humans. The place we shall re shall reclaim. Think about the fact that a staunch ad advocate of humans have turned her back on them. That's quite powerful. This is the time where all God's creation have turned their backs on the humans, and the gods are clearing our path for a brighter future. But to be, I mean, do gods really care about us? I mean, most of the gods I know, they don't. They they didn't really give a shit about human life. They're just like, oh, well, they're there for in entertainment, or in Zeus' case, you know how he was. Uh, it's now time for forms to clear out humans, every single one of them, once and for all. These humans won the war. Won the war they should not have won. And have wielded terror on everything else that stood in their ego -maniac maniacal path. Oh, I can't read. They will be brought to swift justice. Conclusion. Remember the fact that the goddess Morgan is now on our side. Under her guidance, we will successfully destroy the humans that may stand in our path and reach the holy land of... Ternanog, first, opening the gates first. Do not lift the life engulfed in thoughtless, thoughtless, selfless desire, but rather lift in the peaceful, humanist life. That's the life we've been striving for as we fight these humans. Goddess Morkin is now with us. This fight is now not strictly for revenge, but for our quest to bring light and order back to this world. Once. The order is back in store. We will all prosper and live healthy lives. To those that are serious about eluding the humans from this world, read the next volume. I mean, it sounds like a revenge. Sounds like revenge. The book is called The Book of Revenge. Oh, I read a lot. But I'll probably stop for now. Anyways, a lot of revenge, revenge, backstabbing, more revenge. And some race of clashing formers against humans. We will find out what the next volume will have for us. And maybe Morgan isn't like that. I'm having hope. 
that she's still with us or I mean with any life but then again I feel like I've seen a lot of gods and how they are so it might not be like that but if she still has any teeth left in her I mean maybe but, but although that game was also made meta thinking that game was made after this game so that might not be it but anyways see you later